Hi guys, well here we are again, um, <laughs> same place. Uh, today is the 22nd of August, it's Tuesday. Um, last Saturday, if you've seen the previous video, I fished with Alessio and he had that lovely 10 pound, 10 ounce out. He uh, beat his PB by nearly three pound, which is fantastic. Um, decided to come down again this evening um, because uh, I've checked out the weather forecast and tonight is the last uh, sort of mild evening for what looks like a, at least a week on the forecast so I thought I'd come down so you probably see him sweating like a pig it's really muggy um, the water's looking over there I would say gone down about six inches from Saturday night um, it's not quite down to its painful level um, but it's gone down. It's still kept a little bit of colour in it, so I'm hopeful. Um, it's it's only about 7:15. It's getting dark already um, because of the thick cloud cover. Uh, I've put a bit of bait in. I've just put some pellets in. Um, I've actually baited up out in the middle where we were fishing unsuccessfully on Saturday evening. I've also uh, dropped some in the margin down behind me here, which is where Alessio had that uh, fish from because um, there's still a fairly decent flow on here and it seems that on Saturday can't work, quite work out whether one of two things was in, in play either our bait all ended up washing around into this slack bit just behind these reeds here which is why the barbel were there or they were sat there because they didn't want to be out in the current because they would have been a bit lazy because um, it's not the fastest river in the world of Warwickshire Raven um, and perhaps the, the barbel in here just used to uh, the, the slow flow and they don't really like it when it's fast. I don't know, one or the other happened. Um, but anyway, as there's a bit of pace on it still, I'm going to stick a bait round here. Just see what happens. Can't hurt, can it? I've got one out in the flow anyway. So uh, I'm going to have one rod out in the current over here and one rod behind in the margins here. The, the margins are quite deep here. Um, so it's at least four foot there, uh, right, pretty much just off the reeds. So, uh, you know, covering both areas, um, we'll see what happens. I'll catch up with you shortly. Well guys, again, if you've seen the previous video with uh, Alessio, um, he's right, I have just found that uh, that deep hole. It seems, you know, it's a couple of foot deeper than the surrounding area, um, which means it's got a clear bottom. I just fed the feeder down and uh, felt it down, should I say. Nice donk onto the bottom, so uh, I've got a rod in that deep hole uh, fishing on the krill. Rods are tapping away. I'm having some pluck, some nice sort of um, positive indication that there's fish, fish around and they want to feed. Uh, so things are looking good at the moment. Um, it's uh, just coming up to eight o'clock now. Um, so uh, it's, it's really sort of that sort of time when I'd expect to start getting uh, some action. Um, there were some guys down here spinning earlier on, but they've. Uh, They've since departed. I saw one of them pull a jack out, not surprisingly. Um, there's a, a, a 
camp just across here um, for uh, migrant workers that work on the fruit and veg farm and uh, they've um, they do a lot of spinning, they like doing their spinning and uh, they're all down here and they've all got their rod licences <laughs> which is fantastic and their club licences so um, that's really good news uh, very nice chaps as well um, uh, English was about as good as my Bulgarian but um, which is pretty much non-existent uh, but it's good that they're you know they're, they're, they're getting the licences and uh, say I saw one caught a, caught a pie can you put it back so can't argue with that can you anyway Things are looking good, so uh, I'm quite confident. Um, and over my shoulder, you can see behind me there, um, I've actually um, just today bought a couple of very, very budget, um, because uh, <laughs> when, you, when you've got two kids, you don't have a lot of money to throw at fishing tackle, but uh, two Shimanos, because I do love my other Shimanos that are on my, uh, my sort of carp, in inverted commas, rods. Um, so I've bought some Shimano, they're the Hyperloop, but I like, I like small reels, so I bought some 2,500 size. Um, not bait runner on them, um, don't need it for this kind of work. Um, when it gets dark and I stick the alarms on, I should just back the drag off, um, and then obviously, uh, if I get a run, fish will be able to take the line, I can just pick the rod up and uh, tighten the drag up. Um, front drag, which is great, I uh, prefer a front drag as well. Um, but. Uh, Hopefully we can christen them tonight on their uh, virgin trip out with, uh, with a barbel, that'd be fantastic. Anyway, things are looking good. Well guys, that's, uh, <laughs> you probably saw there. <laughs> I was getting a shot of the reels and uh, the one rod <laughs> jumped off the rod rests. beast I've just seen it but uh, it's probably about seven pound it's given these this rod and reel a, a great workout Well, guys, it always happens when you least expect it. So uh, it's, uh, it's five or six pound, I should think, maybe seven. Um, got him in the net, just having a rest. Um, got uh, Alessio to thank for this one. Thanks, mate. Um, it was the margin rod that went. They obviously like sitting down here by the reeds. So that's uh, that's fantastic. I was actually talking the bar to the Barbell Ninja this afternoon uh, uh, on a direct messaging him on Instagram and we're having a chat and he was saying about <laughs> use, uh, starting to fish in the margins a little bit more and uh, you know Alessio catching that one there and, and Richard chatting to me this afternoon uh, made me uh, think yeah I'm definitely going to drop that rod in the margins and uh, bosh a barbel fantastic he's resting up in the net um, let me sweat again. I'll, uh, I'm going to give him a few minutes, then we'll get him up and have a look at him. <laughs> well, guys, that's fantastic. I've only been here that long. Um, 
<laughs> it's not a monster, but they're all welcome. Uh, maybe six pounds, something like that. And to be honest, I think this fella, ooh, <laughs> I think this fella, who's still very lively, there we go, how's that? To be honest, I think with this fella, that means in the last few weeks, I've caught more barbel from the Warwickshire Raven than I ever have before <laughs> the previous two weeks. <laughs> Seem to have absolutely hit a, a hot spot for them here. Uh, and I've got Alessio to thank for this one, as I said, in exactly the same spot as you had that 10 pound 10. <laughs> absolutely mint condition as well. That's brilliant. I'm over the moon and perhaps we can have a bigger one. We might sneak a bigger one out in a minute. <laughs> I'm going to get this one back. Well guys, that's the rods back in the water um, after that bit of <laughs> mayhem. I'm not sure how it'll come out on the uh, on the camcorder because actually I was just uh, had the camcorder down by the reels uh, right down there as, as it leapt. <laughs> the rod leapt off with the, uh, the old three foot twitch. Um, so it was a little bit uh, chaotic for a minute. Um, but I hope I got some decent footage for it. I think I did. Um, but it's, uh, again, it's one of those things when you fish on your own. Um, last few weeks, I've been a bit spoiled with Anastasia and Alessio being here. You know, there's someone else to grab the camera or help out while you're playing a fish. But uh, I'm on Jack Jones tonight. So uh, if it's a bit pants um, when I'm otherwise engaged, <laughs> please accept my apologies. Anyway, that's a brilliant start. Um, from down the edge as well getting some confidence down there um, but you know the rod in the middle was banging away as well what I've actually done um, is I've got one rod now on the TG active and what I've done that is put, I've put that in the margins because um, I just want to swap things around really uh, I know it's a good barbel bait um, so I've put that in the margins where the krill rod was which I just had that fish on and the krill one I've put out in the current um, where I've been baiting up so uh, I'm going to get a little bit more baiting. It's obviously some fish down here, um, and the, the rod out in the current's been twitching away as well. Um, I haven't been uh, using too much ground bait tonight. I didn't want to mix any up. Um, call me a miser, but to be honest with you, I, I always take it home. And if I'm, you know, I'm always down here every two or three days, so it's not a problem. And either it's in the back of the car open, and at the moment it just dries off in the back of the car um, and doesn't go mouldy, or in the winter, uh, to be honest, I stick it in the freezer. Um, but I use it up anyway, but um, it's Tuesday night, as I say, and I shan't be coming to the weekend now, so uh, I wasn't going to mix any more up. I just thought I'd put some pellets in, and all I've done really tonight is put some 4 mil Scopex squid pellets in, and uh, about two-thirds of those, and a third uh, Pacific tuna pellets, uh, because they're quite heavy, and they'll get down in the current. Um, the TG Active and the, um, what's the other ones I've got, 4G squid, they're more... Um, more aerated sort of pellet um, and I think they'll go floating off downstream and what I like to do as well uh, what I'm doing tonight I like to put matching bait and pellets in the feeder but the bait that I'm scattering about um, I like to I like it to be different really I use a lot of halibut pellets or I haven't got any with me tonight which is why I'm using the Scopex squid so what I want to do is get a carpet of bait down which is one smell and I want my bait to smell different that's the idea um, hopefully so they'll home in on that um, because you know there's no point to me anyway there's no point in fishing when you've only got two hours is putting a boilie you know say a krill boilie in the middle of 40 krill boilies you know it doesn't stand out what's the point I want my bait to stand out um, I want it to be the biggest thing there the smelliest thing there and have a different smell which is why I'm doing what I'm doing um, I once heard it a long time ago equated to you know fishing in a field of cows for a cow where well, you wouldn't use a blade of grass would you because <laughs> the chances of getting a cow are very slim 
you know you want your bait in the feed trough anyway I'll stop waffling um, and I'm gonna get some more baiting well guys we're uh, we're properly starting to lose the light now um, time is let's have a look just 8 30 um, again if if you haven't seen any of my previous videos I do this say, say this quite often but uh, this camcorder really does make it look a lot lighter than it is it's uh, it's not as light as it appears on here it's, uh, it's very overcast um, the sun's gone down it's starting to get properly dark um, I know it looks like uh, look it's a lot brighter on here but uh, trust me it's it's starting to get to the point here where uh, I'd need a torch to rebate um, it's all going to be quiet after that fish I haven't had any tips um, sorry taps on the tips um, but you know um, we have created a, a big disturbance so uh, we'll see how it goes anyway Well guys, um, unfortunately we haven't had any more action. Uh, the evening's been marred a little bit. Um, I, it was just getting dark and uh, some shoulder bream moved in, I could hear them rolling. Um, which, you know, it's not the end of the world, don't really mind catching bream. Although down here they do seem to be a lot smaller than the ones I catch above the weir, but um, not a massive problem catching bream happily. But um, then the otter turned up. <laughs> Um, uh, those of you who have seen my videos before you'll know I don't use torches, I don't have torches on, I don't I only use this thing for really for baiting up. Um, so I sat there listening to the otter work <laughs> not far <laughs> from this marginal spot where I had the bait, I could hear him diving, <sighs> that close to going home. I just decided to go home and um, was about to pull the rods in and I got a clanging great bite um, sure it was a chub to be honest um, didn't pull the rod round or anything it was just doom, doom, doom. Um, pretty sure it was a chub struck into fresh air um, so you know hung on another 10 or 15 minutes it's probably about 10 15 now uh, give it another 10 or 15 minutes um, cast that same rod back out into the marginal spot um, and had a clang within five minutes. Again, I'm sure it was a chub, just a big sharp pull round. Um, and when I got the uh, rod in, um, one of the boilers was gone, one of the halves of boiler had gone and all the paste had gone. So I'm sure again, it was a chub. Um, but that's me done for the evening. So um, really good that we had a barbel. Um, not so good that uh, the otter turned up. But never mind, you know, there's always the weekend, <laughs> bank holiday weekend. So um, just like to say thanks once again for uh, watching the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, enjoy your own fishing. If you want to put any comments below about how you're getting on, how your season's going, really love to hear it, guys. So uh, please feel free. And uh, I'll see you again soon.